does. Maharaj, please accept my dandavat pranam that your lotus feet. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to all our Guru Maharajas, all glories to you, Maharaj. Um, if you be so kind and enlighten us today from Canto 7, chapter number 2, verse number 13, Maharaj. Whenever you're ready, you can take the call over Hari Bhav. Thank you, Mother Nina Hare Krishna. My obeisances to you and to all the devotees. <laughs> okay. Bring up the share screen. <laughs> okay. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Itite bhatri nirdesham adaya sira sadritaha tatagadyanam dharanam vidahu kandana priyaha. Translation Thus the demons, being fond of this disastrous activity, the Karani Kashi Pu's instructions on their head with great respect and offered him obeisances. According to his direction, they engaged in envious activities directed against all living beings. The followers of demoniac principles, as described, they were thoroughly envious of the general population. In the present day, scientific advancement exemplifies such envy. The discovery of nuclear energy has been disastrous to people in general because demons all over the world are manufacturing nuclear weapons. The word Kadara Priya is very significant in this regard. Demoniac persons who want to kill the Vedic culture are extremely envious of the feeble citizens, and they act in such a way that ultimately their discoveries will be inauspicious for everyone, Jagatu Hita. The 16th chapter of Bhagavad Gita fully explains how the demons engage in sinful activities for the destruction of the population. Om Gyan Timiranda Syagyanam Dhanam Salataya Chaksun Maritam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Dadati Kam. One day, Hum Shiguru Shita Pate Kamalam. Shiguru Vaishnavam Scha. Shi Rupam Sagaja Tam Sahagana Lalita Sri Visha Tam Vitam Scha. Mau Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale. Shi Bhakti Bhakti Veda Prasthami Nikinamane. Namaste, Saraswati Deve, Gongamani Pacharime, Nirvise Sarasun Yamari, Pasyakti Ave Satarime, Panchakalpa, Tarubis Chakri Pasindu, Veda Chapatitanam, Pavani Gil, Vaishnava, Yoma Mahona Maha, Jaisi Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shi Advaita Gadahar, Shivan Sadhivar, Bhaktivindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So there are two classes of living beings, Sura and Asura. This is described in the 16th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, that these two classes of beings are always at uh, odds with each other. The Suras, the devotees, the demigods, and those who are like the demigods and who, have, who have good qualities, want to engage in devotional service to give everything to the Lord because they understand that everything is the property of the Lord and to use everything in the service of the Lord is the perfection of one's life and that is called bhakti. And even if they are not devotees, they are pious, and they only take what they're, they're allotted in order to keep body and soul together. Excuse me. And therefore, yes, 
the suras, the asu, the, the suras, always are in line with the instructions of the Lord and live according to the, the law of material nature. But the yasuris are just the opposite. They see the property of the Lord, or they don't even, sometimes they don't even acknowledge the Lord. They see all, everything material as opportunities to enjoy more and more. But their desire to enjoy is unfulfilled. They they have this uh, uh, intense desire to enjoy at the expense, as Prabhupada says, at the expense of the of the feeble citizens. And in Prabhupada made one statement. He said, uh, uh, "As devotees in our execution of devotional service." We don't have any problems with Maya, but because Maya has to serve the demons, there are so many problems. Now, the demons are always looking to get more. If you read the 16th chapter, as Prabhupada recommends here at the very last statement, they are never satisfied. They want more and more and more. Prabhupada says the demons will do anything. They'll do anything to fulfill their plans for lusty desires and greed. Um, they'll kill their own parents. They'll kill their own children. You see the example of Karani Kashipu when his son uh, Prahlad defied him by taking the side of Vishnu because he was a devotee of Vishnu. His father became so envious that he just wanted to kill his son. Of course, Allah was protected by the Lord. So Harani Kashipu was unsuccessful. But this is the nature of the demoniac mentality. And Prabhupada in 1972, in one lecture, I believe it was in London, he was speaking and he was talking about the, the march of Kali Yuga. Now, how Kali Yuga is increasing. And there will be more and more difficulties, more and more problems. And all of this is due to the growth or the proliferation of the demoniac population. Because people don't follow samskaras, the Garbadan samskara, which prepares the womb for a child According to the good qualities, no one follows. People engage in all kinds of illicit activities at any time. Even in marriage, they don't follow any rules, regulation. And therefore, a class of demoniac people enter into the world and they just cause havoc. These are called Varna Sankara. When uh, Krishna was encouraging Arjun to fight on the battlefield, Arjun had many reasons why he didn't want to fight. And one of the reasons was that if all of the men were killed, the women would be unprotected, and then you would have Varna Sankara. Mm -hmm. And then the whole population would go, would gravitate down to the lowest. So that's what you have today in the world. And the demons have taken positions in very powerful, uh, very powerful positions especially within the scientific world, within the medical world, within the uh, political world, and in every areas, actually in the news industries everywhere. And they make propaganda simply to proliferate their desire to enjoy and get more and more. Um, for me to speak about this, I could speak for hours about what's going on with the demoniac programs, but I don't think this is the pretty much the uh, essence of the topic of this of this class, because there are unlimited informations about how the demons are working in the world today to destroy people. It's um, quite grandiose, and I don't think anybody needs to know in detail, but you can just look around and you can see everything about how things are gravitating down. People in general are good, but they're led by demoniac.
propaganda and by people whose goal is simply to exploit. Excuse me for one minute. The situation in the world is quite precarious. The problem in that lecture in 1972 in London, he said, but devotees don't have anything to worry about. He said, the demons will definitely cause disturbances in your life. But just take shelter of Krishna, take shelter of the Holy Name. And he used the example of both Prahlad and Devaki, who were being harassed Pallad by his father, Devaki by her, by her brother, Kamsa. You can see both of these attempts to exploit were within the family. One's trying to kill their son. The other, the other demon is trying to kill their uh, nephew, who will be born to his sister. So, yeah, this is the demon they don't care. Um, and... Uh, there's, a, there's some powerful statements. There's one statement in that 16th chapter which describes how the demons think. So much wealth I have today and so much more will I have in the future. I have killed my... He is my enemy and I have killed him and my other enemy will also be killed. I am perfect, powerful, and happy. I am surrounded by aristocratic relatives, I shall give in charity, I shall rejoice. So this is Krishna speaking. Krishna is making this statement. He's explaining the nature of the demons, how they think. And this is obvious. There was many, many powerful, powerful dynasties in the world, families, who are of the demoniac nature who own practically all the wealth in the world, just like recently heard a lecture that 90% of the world's natural wealth is uh, owned by 2% of the population. And most people don't even have the basics in order for them to live. If they do have it, they have to struggle to get it. And there's so much scarcity in the world only because of the demons. But Prabhupada said, for the devotees, we take shelter, and it's a great opportunity to preach Krishna consciousness. Those people are, are suffering. Prabhupada makes the point here that the demons are manufacture nuclear weapons. And people will think, mistakenly think, oh, they will not use them because if one person throws it, then the other person throws and everybody dies. But in one lecture with Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada was talking about that people in general in the world have developed animalistic characteristics. There's their goals, their, their activities in life simply center around increasing eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. So, and accumulating more and more wealth. Um, in that lecture, Prabhupada made it an, an analogy that the, the materialistic persons are like animals, and they're also very ferocious animals. And a ferocious animal is also there within the human culture, and they're called terrorists. <laughs> And so the discussion continued in, on that subject. And finally, one devotee said, yes, Prabhupada, they have the nuclear weapons now, uh, but no one will use them because it's a balance of terror. Prabhupada made an, uh, a, he completely rejected that statement. He said, if they create it, they will use it. <laughs> so they're just waiting to use it. Um, so they, so people are generally good. People are generally 
uh, simply want to uh, live a normal life, but the demons will not let you. <laughs> they will destroy everything and try to accumulate everything. When Krishna came to the world 5,100 years ago, he came to relieve the demon demoniac population again. And he does that each time. He did that when Ram, he came as Ram, he came as Nishringadev, he came as Krishna. He came as many incarnations to uh, destroy the demonic population because Krishna says, Yadai dai dharma sya jnana bhavati bharata bhutanam dharma sya tadatmanam srijami aham pravitranayam sadunam vinasanaya chaduskritam dharma samstarpanartayam sambhavami yuge vidya. Duskritam, to kill the duskriyats or the mischievous or the demons, the Lord comes. So in that lecture, as we mentioned, Prabhupada was discussing to the devotees, the, uh, uh, this lecture about Prabhupada said the demons are increasing. He also said that when the devotees asked him, well, will Krishna come in his incarnation again? Prabhupada said he has already come. He's come in the form of his holy name. Kali Kale, Nama Rupa, Krishna Avatar, Nama Hoite, Ayasara Jagat Nishtara. That in this age, the Lord has advented in the sound of his name, and his name is non different than him. Abhin Natwam, Nami Nami No. Nami and Nam, Nam means name. And uh, Nami means he who is named. Abhinna means that which is different. Abhinna means non-different. So the name of Krishna and Krishna are exactly the same. And it says Nijasarva Shaktis, all of the energies, qualities, forms, pastimes, the complete nature of the absolute truth is found in the name of Krishna because Krishna's name is exactly as powerful as he is. So that holy name is the incarnation in this age to purify the, the devotees, to push back the demoniac influence and to reestablish the golden era, which is Lord Chaitanya's prediction. So devotees have to become more and more aware of how important it is to take shelter of the holy name. The chant 16 rounds is really just the beginning we are asked, chant, Prabhupada asked the devotees to chant 16 rounds at that time because they had rejected Srila Prabhupada's request to chant 64 rounds and then 32 rounds. They claimed there was too many services to do, they had no time, and they weren't inclined to chant so much. So Prabhupada said, all right, 16 and no less. But in his lectures, if you hear his lectures and read his books, he always says that we should be chanting as much as possible. He said 16 rounds is just to get you started. So today, at least in the, uh, not in America, I think yesterday was Ekadasi. Today in Europe and in India, today is Ekadasi. So it's always a day that we can uh, increase the chanting. And when we do, we get a taste. Because the more you chant, and if you chant nicely, the more you chant, the more you get a taste for chanting. And as that chanting and, and taste increase, then one wants to automatically chant more and more. One doesn't even think about numbers anymore. They just want to chant and chant. So this chanting is Krishna in sound, and it is the, the uh, protector and the purifier of the devotees and of people in general. So the demons will give trouble. They have their plans. They're always making plans to destroy the world or to create havoc. Um, one of the pr programs that the demons do is they, uh, because they have so much wealth and influence, when there is a war going on, they, fl they fund both sides of the war. They'll supply armaments and uh, military to both sides just to keep the war going because war is a good business. 
and it helps them to fulfill their political issues. So um, we're living at a very precarious time, but at the same time, a very great time. Although the demons are increasing, the quality of Krishna's mercy has, is manifested in the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. So, Therefore, uh, devotees want to uh, take shelter of Krishna and because not only is it shelter and protection, but it's a way to glorify the Lord, which is the essence of bhakti. The glorify the Lord is the essence of bhakti. But the holy name is so complete that in the in this essence of glorification, Krishna takes care of his devotees 100%. Not 99.9, .9, but 100%. Krishna gives full protection. So... Uh, yeah, so this this particular section here, you're going to read a lot about um, the demoniac. And people might think, well, this is the Bhagavatam. This was thousands of years ago. It's not like that today. Believe me, if you think like that, you don't know what's going on. <laughs> because you live in a, uh, in a, in a very sheltered situation. The world is going through some intense situation. And there's also uh, a group, they're not devotees, but they're a group of people who are trying to rid the world of demons. They've organized themselves to uproot the demoniac culture in the world. So it may come to a, a major war. We don't know. But Prabhupada actually said that the next war will be between demons and demons. And devotees asked, what will the devotees do? Prabhupada said, we'll preach because the preaching will be very good. Even during and after the war. <laughs> so, unfortunately, there is that class of people called demons. Otherwise, if there were no demons, the world would be generally quite peaceful. And people could fulfill their desires nicely and also worship the Lord with no problems. But because of demons, there are so many troubles. And one of their main ways to influence people is through the news media with lying propaganda, advertisement, and various types of allurements to get people to buy things and also to go along with their programs or control. Uh, I could go into the, a lot of details on this, but I don't think this is the time for that. Because, uh, one thing will lead to another, and this class will end by next Thursday. So I don't want to go into that, but um, there is, but the devotees need to organize themselves more and more around the Sankirtan movement and along with that establish a social system that will insulate and set the foundation for living for the devotees. As long as we stay dependent on the demoniac culture, we are in a precarious situation at any time. As uh, Srila Prabhupada did say in 1973, it's on record, you can hear it. He said in 50 years, the whole Western civilization will collapse. Now he said it in 1973, 50 years is this year. It's collapsing right now. So therefore, Prabhupada gave us the formula, build these farm communities. He said, this is the future of the world, and this is the future of our society. So um, on the social level, the devotees should also be thinking how to uh, create a lifestyle which is less dependent and or maybe even completely independent of this demoniac culture. And Prabhupada set the foundation for that by giving hundreds of lectures, writing about it in his books, and speaking about it on 
the importance of developing Van Ashram and based on farm communities, simple living, cow protection, agriculture. Of course, that's a big program. It's happening in some places in the world and devotees are actually working on it. Some are, have actually succeeded in developing a community based on that. And um, because Prabhupada could foresee that unless we did that, we would be victimized by the collapse of the Western civilization, which is happening. <laughs> right. Okay, so um, I don't want to get into too much detail because some of it is politics, and politics is what it is. It's politics. But in the Bhagavatam, you'll see the, there's a lot of um, subject matters that deal with the secular world, economics, politics, uh, sociology. And here you can see what are the nature of the demons. Rani Kashifu, he is so angry that his brother, Ranyaksha has been killed that he just wants to take revenge against the saintly people. So he sends them to uh, destroy cow sheds, farm communities, uh, places of pilgrimages for saintly people. You know, I think it's coming up in the verses that are about to unfold in that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the wonderful classes. I see the hands of the devotees are already going up. You have explained so nicely. You've shared so that so many wonderful details. Uh, that sixteen rounds is not just enough. We should do so much more, especially in the Kartik month. Otherwise, how much are we different than the, all the other Danavas uh, that we talk about? Um, <laughs> yes, you sure finish it? Uh, yes, Prabhu. A lot of Danavas out there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> you sure finish it, Mataji? I see your hand has been raised. Mataji, would you like to go ahead and ask your question, please? Dai, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my obeisance. All oh, glory to your divine service. Hari Hari Bo. We miss you. Hari Bo. <laughs> uh -oh. Thank you. I'm, I'm always, every other week on every other Thursday, I'm doing a program with the Bhagavatam with, uh, with Anasuya. Really? Oh, yeah. really? That's in Pitt, I mean, in, in uh, Pennsylvania, right? Harrisburg. Yeah. Yeah, every every other Thursday I do uh -huh. Harrisburg, and then I do here on this Thursday in Harrisburg. And Anasuya is she she controls that program. So yeah. All I'm right. Well, so okay, and uh, I'll make sure that I get to associate Harry Ball. And I uh, just wanted to offer my obeisances. It's really nice to hear from you. Thank you for the wonderful reminder of what time it is, and in reference to the chanting of the holy name, how Krishna is the personification of it, and we can take shelter with that. Thank you so very much for that reminder. We need to constantly be reminded of that. Absolutely. Jai Maharaj, you look really well. Are you feeling okay? How have you been, how is your health? Well, we're in polluted Delhi right now. Okay. Delhi, Delhi is, is so bad the pollution that they have, they called off all they called off the schools, and it's a uh, it's a an alarm. The, the pollution is so bad that uh, I'm sitting in my room and I'm getting affected by the pollution. So that's what that cough is about, then. Because I noticed you were coughing. Well, everyone in the city is getting, uh, what we say, mm -hmm. irritation in the throat because of the pollution. So, so welcome to Kali Yuga. <laughs> Die, Maharaj. I hope you feel better, Maharaj. Hopefully Krishna uh, disseminate that pollution for the devotees there. Love you, Maharaj. Miss you so very much. Hari Hari Bo. All glory to your divine service. Hare Krishna. Uh -huh. 
Shiva Kumar Prabhuji, please go ahead with your question. Hare Krishna, thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Maharaj, the Lord Pranams Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, one question. Um, in Gaudi Asambradaya, our Acharyas insist on uh, focusing on just the devotion service and not worry about uh, the liberation. Uh, but uh, from your class, Maharaj, what I am thinking from my experience, uh, with the devotees uh, struggling with anarthas inside and with the um, um, uh, environment uh, getting more and more uh, polluted or contaminated outside with the demoniac propensities and things like that, uh, how can we still stay motivated to be focused on devotion service Maharaj and uh, not be uh, worried about uh, liberation or moving out of uh, material uh, world Maharaj is the question. Hare Krishna. Uh, I don't think my class was about liberation. <laughs> it was about establishing a social structure. I mentioned this only at the end. For mm. a lifestyle that is conducive. This is Srila Prabhupada's uh, repeated instruction to his devotees. He said, 50% of my mission is unfulfilled. Build these farms. This is the future of our movement. Mm. He can't say, well, you know, if you want to live under a tree and chant Hare Krishna, fine. <laughs> but people have families and they have to support their families and they mm. have to live and they have, they have needs. Mm. And both from the material requirements and from the position of spiritual uh, uh, what, what's worse in other words these farm communities a more simple lifestyle is conducive to spiritual practice and mm -hmm. material arrangements and mm -hmm. this is the way people lived for thousands of years it's only the last 350 years not even and we live in these big metropolis with all kinds of pollution, noise, and crime, and whatever else you got. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the demons have only come out since the end of the 1700s. They've come out full force. And so in the last 200, about 325 years, the demons have been working their program to mm -hmm. populate the world with this highly industrial complex it, it simply exploits and you can just read it in the Bhagavatam I can give you hundreds of Srimad Bhagavatam verses uh, for instance in first canto 10th chapter verse number 4 and 5 first canto 8th chapter verse number 40 and there's many more there's first canto 11th chapter verse number 12 there's so many verses Prabhupada's talking about the, the, the uh, advantage of it, this simple lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, and he said it's going to become a necessity as Western civilization falls apart. So we're not looking for liberation. Our whole focus mm -hmm. is to become Krishna conscious. But you have people who are, have families. So mm -hmm. how your family? So you want an environment most spirit, most spiritual movements had had communities. Not community is actually the foundation for getting fulfilling all your desires materially and spiritually. The Western materialistic civilization has broken people up into the nuclear family, and that is the whole capitalistic program is to sell more products that way. But if you live off the land and you live in a communal, you can produce your own food. You can get everything you need for your basics to live nicely. You don't have to work for it. It's all provided mm. by even medicine is provided by nature in the form of herbs. Everything is there. But it takes yeah. some time to develop it because we're in, we're in, we, we have to go through that transition stage to transition back to a more normal and natural lifestyle, which is mm. also more more doable for spiritual life because you'll have more time and you're more peaceful in that environment. Mm -hmm. These devotees, a lot of devotees just don't have time for Krishna consciousness because they're so busy <laughs> working, taking care of kids, doing so many things, and they're just squeezing in their spiritual life. Mm -hmm. 
comes to finding time for extra curricular spiritual activities, they find it very difficult to find it. Mm -hmm. So to make to live is very easy, but to live in the way we live now is very, what do you say, destructive. Mm -hmm. the, food, the food we eat is contaminated, the war the air is contaminated, the water is contaminated. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere is contaminated. Mm -hmm. That's that's these cities. They're just places of pollution and crime. An economic gain for a, a small group of people. Mm -hmm. So Prabhupada was not simply speaking spiritual philosophy. He is also giving us an understanding how we should live as devotees. Because that is also if you're, you know, it's, if you if your material life is in turmoil, it's not easy to practice spiritual life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj, for your wonderful answer. And it's so true. A little bit of turmoil comes very tiny, and immediately everything we are so we get so bewildered. We get so stressed. Um, Radha Jyoti Mataji, would you like to go ahead with your question? Hare Krishna Mataji, then with Pranam to you. Hare Krishna, then with Pranam Maharajji. My question to you is, uh, we uh, every day is uh, moving very fast. I mean, uh, it's a fast Kalyuga. And again, it's a Kalyuga. We are having so many problems. And then we chant. So, uh, the consciousness that we have for an entire day influence our chanting. Though we hear, we apply our intelligence in our uh, dealings because most of the time uh, I deal with non-devotees than the devotees. So I want to know uh, how how to make my entire day uh, so that my chanting will be improved on every day. Hare Krishna. Okay, I would suggest that you you make your chanting done in the, in the the first part of the day. And arrange your schedule where you can get up early enough and finish it, most of your rounds, or if not all of your rounds, before you begin your day. And you will be more prepared to deal with the challenges, the problems, the, whatever else you do during the day. So early morning sadhana is the foundation for spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. And you can speak to the devotees. There are many devotees who have adopted that now. They chant their rounds before they do anything. So, yeah, I would suggest that's, that is the solution. Early, sadhana. If you live at home, then uh, you can make your own schedule. Get up at a certain time and Give yourself a couple hours just for japa. And then you, if you try to chant during the day, it becomes, you have your responsibilities and they come at you according to your time and you find sometimes there's no time for chanting, you have to squeeze it in. Chant early. That's my, that's my humble suggestion. And that's what I do. I chant 16 rounds before I begin my day. Unless there's an emergency, but that's a rare thing. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm following that, Maharajji, but my question is the entire day, how we spend, how we deal, how we develop our consciousness affects our chanting. So uh, is not, so how we should be improving in our dealings because that affects our chanting one little disturbance in the mind the entire 16 rounds get affected and if the mind is peaceful or a calm then the chanting is in a feel to chant more on that particular day so i feel that the dealings affect my chanting a lot than the reading that quite often we read but repetitive reading or repetitive hearing affects a lot so that was uh, 
could you yeah. please teach something on this or give some suggestion or advice on this particular thing that how how we should be dealing is how much we should tolerate for a particular thing because there is a limit we tend to ha- have certain standards to maintain right as in devotee when we deal with non devotee so yeah. could you please teach on this you can't control the environment and you can't control other people you have to be be able to control yourself and therefore you, the quality of your own spiritual strengths would allow you to get through all of these situations the other brother father also said he said something he said when i when i get into anxiety i chant loud <laughs> Now, so then my, I've had that experience too, and I've used Srila Prabhupada's guidance for that, and it, it has a, a great effect. Your mind is disturbed during the, your chanting, chant loud, where you can push out the disturbance by the sound of your, the holy name. What happens to you during the day? Who knows? This is the material world, anything could happen. Things could go your way. Things could go the opposite way. People could say something and then it just disturbs your mind for a long time. You have to be somewhat... It's all based on your, the strength of your Krishna consciousness. You have to strengthen your Krishna consciousness. And then you're equipped to deal with all of these challenges that come. The devotee is dira. He's not uh, disturbed by happiness and distress because he's fixed on the spiritual platform. So try to become dearer. Make your sadhana strong. Read Srila Prabhupada's books and uh, chat your rounds nicely every day. Associate with devotees. The stronger you are, the weaker my is. The weaker you are, the stronger my own. All the Matajis are praising you, saying thank you, Maharaj, for this wonderful answer. And that's so true. I've also noticed, Maharaj, like when um, we chant properly, things fall in its place. So because Krishna doesn't want us to be disturbed. So if we chant, that holy name somehow protects. And it's such a Wonderful experience. There won't be too much turmoil. Any question? Eternally grateful to you, Maharaj Ji, for the answer. I'll try to chant loud. And I'll try to chant my nice rounds in the morning itself. Hare Krishna. Thank you, thank you. I don't know if I was speaking on mute. Um, Any other questions, devotees, do you have? Hey, Krishna Maharaj, I'm driving, so I can't put my video on. But um, I, I think as we're all devotees, we realize we're not doing our best in life to chant and are distracted in life. And then we have children, and you want to encourage them to do their job arounds peacefully and every day. How do you deal with a, a teenager who decides, I don't like Iskon, I don't want to do this? What would be your suggestion? <laughs> There's a lot of teenagers like that. I don't know. Uh, teenagers, uh, if he, one of the things that we use to get teenagers involved is kirtan. They have a tendency to gravitate towards kirtan. I don't know if you can bring your son or whoever it is that you're referring to to, to kirtan, it might be better. Uh, there's nothing about it. The, kid, the, the teenagers are just who they are. That's, but if you want to bring them closer, bring them in. Bring them to a kirtan. You go through. If you can try to get them to go to the kirtan, that would be successful. Children are children. They're, they're you know, especially in this age, they're rebellious. It's just the way they are. Do your best 
know the person you're trying to help and see how to help them. This is Anita, right? Ramia? Oh, sorry, Mara. This is Seema from Cincinnati, actually. From, oh, yes. from Cincinnati, Ohio. Yes. You, let's see. I don't see you online at home. Even your name. <laughs> I I had my video on pause because I was driving, trying to be oh. safe. All right. So um, you just had a nice, successful Rashi Yes. Yeah. Yes, it was amazing. A lot of kids came out, right? Yes. Yeah, you have you have the kids won't sit and stand up, or they don't want to read the book. But they like a little something with some action in it. <laughs> so kirtan, festivals, like that. That's a way to get them at least connected. That's the idea. Okay, Maharaj, I'll try my best. Yeah, it's it's a feature of parenthood where the kids are who they are. I think they know more than the parents, but they don't. Thank you, Mataji. Hope you drive safely. <laughs> any any further questions for His Holiness? There's a statement. I, I grew up with this statement that as I get older and as I grow up, the young boy is speaking. As I get older and as I grow up, my father gets smarter and smarter. You get the point? Nina, you're you're muted. You're on mute, Nina. Oh, sorry. So yep. Sorry. Yes, yep. yes. We, I, we do get the point. We do get the point. Absolutely. You're so right. Maharaj, I have one. One, like a basic questions, if I may so ask, you, you were talking so much about Krishna, the name of Krishna, that it has everything, the name. Just a basic question. I sometimes wonder, I mean, why did Krishna choose the name Krishna? Krishna's name is a, a description of the nature of the absolute truth. Okay. Krishna doesn't have any name, but he adopts a name based on his activities, his qualities, his relationships with his devotees, like that. Just like he's known as Nanda Nandana, he's the son of Nanda Maharaj, Yasoda Nandana, he's the son of Yasoda. Gopi Janavalava, he gives pleasure to the gopis. So he has names about his qualities, activities. So the name Krishna is the perfect name for the absolute truth because it means all attractive. So God has to be all attractive, otherwise he's not God. So that's the perfect name for the, for the Supreme Lord, Krishna, because it means one who can attract everyone. Wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think I see a question from Shiva Kumar Prabhuji. He says, from time to time, uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, one more question if time permits. We take help from non-devotees from time to time, given many of them are not interested in spiritual life. When they expect us to reciprocate through sense gratification for the help um, for the help they extend, how can we manage their expectations that they don't feel misunderstand the devotees are selfish? Yeah, I just said them some prashadam. <laughs> Huh. Send them or buy them a gift or something like that. You don't have to acquiesce to them. 
but you can give them something. <laughs> Not that we stop their mentality in order to exchange gifts. Non devotees sometimes they come to the temple. And so we give them a chance to practice Krishna consciousness. Or if it's a some business deal outside, then you work according to that. But not that you have to engage in sense gratification. There's no such requirement. <laughs> Very true, Maharaj. Very applicable. Always figure a way to reciprocate without compromising your principles. Mm. Shivakumar Prabhuji thanks everybody and you especially, Maharaj. Um, from Sri Ishopanishad Mataji saying, Krishna name is all attractive, one who attracts everything. Maharaj, and then there is a question from uh, Jyoti Maharaj, um, Jyoti Mataji. Maharaj, we are talking and practicing Satoguna in Srila Prabhupada's expected 64 rounds. He expected a lot from us. I think she's just making a statement. He didn't expect a lot from us. He wanted to give us a lot, but we, we can't accept it. No? <laughs> So he, he, yeah, the instructions of the spiritual master is for the benefit of the devotees. But in Kali Yuga, you know, he, he really has the basics anyway. You want to see how much, how, how, how Krishna conscious you are. This, Calculate your day and see how much time you're giving to Krishna and how much time you're giving to everything else. Just do that and see if you feel satisfied. Fine. If you don't feel satisfied, then that means there needs to be more more emphasis on spiritual activities. Krishna consciousness gives you satisfaction. If you're not satisfied, that means you're either performing it wrong or you're performing it with offense, which is also performing it wrong, or you're not doing it, you're not giving it enough time. It works. Mm -hmm. So if you if we're performing it wrong, then we need to just adjust. And come on and get it get it right. So Krishna told Lord Brahma, um, Nina, turn to the to the Brahma Samhita, verse number fifty-nine. Can we share the screen, Mataji? Brahma Samhita, verse six fifteen fifty-nine. Yeah, no. Brahma, the Brahma Samhita, chapter five. This is Krishna speaking to Brahma after Brahma offers nice prayers to Krishna. Krishna is responding by telling exactly, he sums up the whole process of bhakti in this statement. So here it is. The highest devotion is attained by slow degrees, by the method of constant endeavor for self-realization, and then with the help of scriptural evidence, theistic conduct, perseverance, and practice. Put those three together, knowing the right direction, which is scriptural evidence, proper Vaishnava behavior and conduct, and determination, perseverance, and practice. You put these three together, you've got the process for successful execution 
of devotional service. Very right to the point. That's Krishna speaking. So there's a lot in those three statements. If you unpack it, you'll find the whole process of bhakti is there in those three statements. Sambandha, Abhideya, Prayojana. Sambandha means relationship. Abhideya means the process of bhakti, the activities. Prayojana means the goal. The whole Vedic culture centers around these three points. So Prabhupada has given us an easy formula. Chant Hare Krishna. Offer your food. If you're initiated, then keep deities and worship your deities. Or if you're not, or if you are, still go to the temple and see the deities. Offer gifts when you come to see the deities. And associate with and take part in the activities with the devotees. And read Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam. We want Krishna consciousness, but we don't want to follow the process. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> You want it out of problem. <laughs> and Krishna says perseverance in practice, which means determination. It's, the process is simple. Our minds are complicated. <laughs> Therefore, we take the simple thing and we make it into something very difficult. Yes, very true. Thank you, Maharaj. Hemi Mataji, you have a question for His Holiness? Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, Tanvat Pranam. Uh, I uh, just have a question that uh, we are raised with certain rituals which uh, we've been taught to do uh, as a, you know, as we, as we grow up and, you know, get married and whatnot. But then uh, as we, uh, as I, I'm speaking, referring to myself, uh, I, as I've kind of moved into Krishna consciousness and slowly, slowly trying to understand, um, to to move away from these rituals, which uh, which which are not applicable when you look at it from uh, Krishna consciousness perspective. But then, there, if you if I give up, it may r raise a lot of questions from my family and. Uh, and 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 produce a lot of resistance. So I mean, my question is that whether to give up and and then have a, a a war at home, or if you continue to do it, what kind of mood should you have uh, while doing it? Um, uh, let's see. The, the activities of all activities, or the results of all activities, is to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Um, in the first canto, um, second chapter, uh, I'm not sure exactly what the verse is. If you can turn there, Nina, to first canto, Second chapter, verse, try verse like 28, something around that. Um, 1 to 28. I think that's about where that verse is. It's, it's actually a couple of verses together. And it answers your question perfectly. Um, yeah, we got it. 28 and 29. Vasudeva para Veda, Vasudeva para Mata, Vasudeva para Yoga, Vasudeva para Kriya, Vasudeva para Jnanam, Vasudeva para Tapa, Vasudeva para Dharma, Vasudeva para Yati. Translation. The 
In the revealed scriptures, the ultimate knowledge of knowledge is Krishna, the first knowledge. The, per per the purpose of performing sacrifices is to please him. Yoga is for realizing him. All food of activities are ultimately rewarded by him only. He is the supreme knowledge, and all severe austerities are performed to know him. Religion is rendering love and service to him. He is the supreme goal. So what does that mean? That anything you do should result in glorification or worship of the supreme Lord. Austerities, penances, rituals, homas, whatever activities should center around so add Krishna to your rituals. That's all. Or if they if Krishna is too much for them, add add Narayan or Vishnu to the rituals, and then you have something what is called devotional. So so Mara, just to to understand it. Uh, so if there is this, there, there are days uh, where some fasting is involved, can one just say, well, I'm doing this for the pleasure of Krishna, and then just that's the mood one can keep? Well, what kind of rituals are you speaking about? So there is something called like a karvachas in Indian system, where you fast for the whole day for the, for the, you know, longevity of your husband, and then there is fasting for your children uh, like a, a whole day fasting so the, I mean the, the fast is for the purpose of uh, you know you're trying to get something but now w that's not what our mood is supposed to be in Krishna consciousness we are supposed to do everything for the pleasure of the Lord so I question that what am I doing yeah well Krishna lifted Govardhan Hill which is coming up in a few days. What you're talking about is all of these rituals, mm, service to Ganesh, service to, um, to to Goddess Durga, service to, to Lakshmi, all of these things. These things happen for two weeks just before Govardhan Puja. And Krishna lifted Govardhan Puja just to show that that worship of me is is the only person you should worship. He told his father who wanted to perform the rituals in order to get some water so they could, uh, you know, they were cow herds, they had farms. So they wanted to, uh, they were doing a, a yearly ritual to Indra. Krishna said, you know, just worship the Supreme Lord, worship Govardhan Hill, all worship the cows. And he took them off all of these rituals and he performed the Govardhan Yajna. So that's the reason why he did that at that particular time because Krishna was aware that this is the time when everybody does their all of these different rituals to family members, friends, like that. And so uh, uh, you I would just say, you know, if you want to go ahead with them, you say, well, you're fasting for your husband, but if Krishna is pleased, then your husband will get some benefit. If Krishna is pleased with your activity. So if Krishna is not pleased, but Krishna discourages all of that. He says, those who worship the devas who perform all of these things, their their minds are rita pyan, they're, they're crippled minded. He said, whatever the demigods can supply is automatically given by me because I am the source of the demigods also. Ahamadi devanam, he says. So I would just say, if you can't give it up, try to Krishnaize it. But the best is to give it up. Thank you, Maharaj. Then what for now? Hare Krishna. Thank you. Wonderful questions and beautiful answers. Any further last minute questions?
for anybody. Priya Shupanishad, you still here? I don't see Mataji here. I see that. Okay. Mm -hmm. No further questions. Should we end the call then, Maharaj? What do you suggest? You're in control. Sorry, Maharaj. Can we have the uh, uh, Japa round? Um. If you like, please. Jai Hari Krishna Maharaj, I'm sorry. I was trying to check the verses that you had sent, and I'm not too computer or savvy, but yes, I'm still here. I'm still listening. <laughs> Adibo, sorry I to give, interrupt, Mataji. <laughs> yeah, I give class three You're days. Good. I give the class three days a week and Tuesday, Wednesday, I do my own program. On Thursday, I do, I do either Harrisburg or Charlotte. So you can get on the classes on Tuesday and Wednesday if you want every week. Yes, um, Mara, I will. Uh, Nishringa Leela, are you there? <laughs> Someone yes, just posted in the chat. Yes. Nishringa Leela, just send the Sri Upanishads the uh, way to get onto my Zoom call. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I think somebody else uh, has sent that. I didn't do it. No, it was, somebody, uh, she has to, somebody has to send it to her, right? I need somebody who, who comes onto my regular call who can send her the way to get onto the call. I can do okay. it. You can, Shri, Shri Devi can do it, or Srimati can do it. Okay. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, devotees.